It's the National Football League on EA Sports, where we'll see two of the NFL's oldest and most storied franchises. It's the Chicago Bears and the Washington Commanders. And it comes your way next on Madden Football. Commanders Field holds a little more than 80,000, and they have come out in droves here in Landover, Maryland. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and for both of these teams that we're going to see, Charles, the future is kind of right now. You know, this is something you only see a handful of times in an NFL season where you've got a rookie quarterback versus a rookie quarterback. And I think a lot of that has to do with the era we're in now. Because our dads, they didn't see rookie quarterbacks go against each other. In fact, it could be two, three years before they even saw the playing field. Nowadays, you get drafted, they expect you to play earlier, and these guys as competitors, they'll take their lumps early, but they'd rather be on the field. Here's the former Sooner, Austin Seibert, to get this one started. And off we go in our nation's capital. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. So the Bears ready to go on offense, and it's the number one overall pick leading him out. The Heisman Trophy winner from USC, Caleb Williams. And we're talking about a young man who proved it at every step along the way. First at Oklahoma, then at USC. Big-time talent, big-time production, and won a Heisman Trophy while playing for the Trojans. Now, the number one overall pick lands in Chicago, and there's an awful lot of talent awaiting him, and now he gets a chance to utilize those weapons. Throwing right away is Williams. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Cole Komet. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Big yardage after the catch. That one winds up going for 36. They made that way too easy for them. No one is supposed to be that open against an NFL defense. Once he caught the ball, there wasn't anybody close enough to stop him. And he was able to continue downfield after making the catch. From Commander's territory now, it's first and 10 at the 36. To throw, Williams. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And we get a stoppage because, as you can see, a member of the commanders in some obvious discomfort. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. They'll run for the first time with DeAndre Swift. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Over the middle, and that's caught by Komet. And he'll get positive yardage there as he'll be touched down. That was a lightning-fast decision that time. He just caught it and got rid of it. Because he saw his guy was going to be open immediately. So he took the R, the run, out of the play. He took the O, the option, out of the play and immediately got to the pass. They'll try and run here with Swift. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Had a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing. Right now, everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Not only did they drop it looked like an interception in the end zone, they blew a golden opportunity to shift the momentum. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. 
From the gun, here's Swift. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Five yards, now it's third and five. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Eighth play of this opening drive coming up. This is third down. To throw, it's Williams. Steps away to his left. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Caleb Williams, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Bears are on the board first here this afternoon. And this is a balancing act for a head coach with a rookie quarterback. You've got to walk a line with him. You don't want him getting happy feet, but you also don't want to rein in what worked for him in college. And here, he pulls it down, takes it himself, and takes it into the end zone. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. And he's got it to make it 7-0 in favor of the Bears. So that drive in total eight plays. And it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. The Bears send the kicking team out there, and they will send this one away. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. So the Commanders make their way out on offense for the first time here, and it's the rookie, Jaden Daniels, the number two overall pick, leading the way. And he was the number two overall pick in the draft because he is special. A dual threat athlete, the quarterback position, beats you with his arm and his legs, and runs the ball better than any quarterback since maybe Lamar Jackson came out of Louisville. But with that being said, he's got to be smart about how he runs the football. He puts himself in a position to take some big shots. He's got to be on the field and available for him and his team to be successful. And complete to Zach Ertz. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass-catching abilities, and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. And he completes this one to Terry McLaurin. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. So that time they get the tight end on the hold. Normally he's a pretty good run blocker, but this time he just didn't get his arms extended and let go quickly enough. The flag came out as a result. Well, they go play action. Daniels. That's caught left side by Simmons. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. Nice play call. A little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. Behind the chain, second and 13. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. That penalty accepted, and they move the ball forward. So the penalty erases their earlier loss. Now it's second and eight. To the air goes Daniels. 
Got a man. It's the rookie out of the third round. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. They give the rookie another one on this opening drive and a first down with it. A nice start, Charles, for the first-year passer. He's come out, made a few plays, nice plays to begin this contest. He certainly has. And if he finishes off this drive with a touchdown pass, I vote we don't call him rookie anymore. We'll move him right to veteran and continue from there. And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. Throwing now is Daniels. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll run this one right with Robinson. And he takes us down to about the 12 for a gain of three. Now after the holding call, here's second and 20. Yeah, so they get that one, Charles, on the right tackle. Yeah, oftentimes in that spot, you're trying to work against a defender, trying to set the edge in the running game, and you're trying to drive around and get your body twisted so that he can't get there. Sometimes your hands get too involved. They'll give him four yards there, and they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Well, there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. They'll get this out wide to Eckler. And the tackle made at the 13. He is well short of the first. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? Seibert's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So both teams come away with points on their opening drives. Now they still trail. They answered the touchdown with a field goal, but at least able to break that goose egg here early. And that is what's important, right? Because they didn't let that initial touchdown go unanswered. Took the ball themselves, moved it downfield, and put it through the post for three points. Game on. After the main field goal, Seibert back out there to kick it away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. Working out of the gun, Williams. He'll get this to the longtime charger. It's Keenan Allen. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now, they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. 
That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Right back to Swift again on second down. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. And that run wasn't just for a first down. That was for some confidence. They've had a tough day moving the ball on the ground this entire game. I think after that one, they'll feel a little bit better about themselves. And now they've got more downs to try and get it done. Play action. Now Williams. Open man is connect the tight end. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Now a second and two. To the air, Williams. Open man down the field, that's a Dunze. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington 16. That one goes for 24 yards. We all speculated that this offense was going to be a lot more high-powered. And at Dunze's drafting, definitely puts it in that category. Explosive speed, refined routes, and last year he led college football in contested catches with 21. On first and 10, it's Swift. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. A gain of three, second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Here's Williams. And incomplete. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver. And it results in an incomplete pass. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Looking to throw is Williams. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Caleb Williams with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Bears had six to their lead. What an effort there. Sometimes you hold your breath a bit when you see your quarterback diving for the end zone. You don't want him to land on a shoulder wrong or take a big shot. But he looks none the worse for wear here. And that winds up a touchdown. Santos with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards, and it's capped off by a 13-yard touchdown run. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The commander's going to retake the field for drive number two. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And they'll run the option to start the drive. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit.
They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Here's Daniels. Middle of the field, he's got McCoy. Now he breaks free in the middle of the field. Terry McLaurin, touchdown, Washington. Terry McLaurin, 82 yards. And the Commanders are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. And Charles, I had an offensive coordinator tell me one time that they designed every play to score. I don't know how true that is, but he had to run a long way after that catch. Heck of a play. I think that when he was telling you that, he was designing run after catch in every play. I mean, that, that's the only way to put it in there, and that's what we got on that one. Nice catch, an even better run for big yardage. Austin Seibert on for the extra point. And he's got it. That cuts the lead. It's now 14 to 10. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. Well, this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three, because remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, and right now they've just got to be careful not to lean into overconfidence because every drive has a life of its own. But I like the way that they've started, the way that they're going about doing things right now. They've got a chance for that third consecutive touchdown, and that would be a crushing blow to the defense. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. They'll come up now, third and three. Throwing is Williams. That is caught, and he will have the Bears first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. An entertaining start to this one. More to come on EA Sports. The Bears with the football. We get set to begin quarter number two. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. As they've got it as we resume action. They run out of the gun with Swift to the 43, second down. Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. From the 43, here's a second down and six. Looking to throw. Williams over the middle, and it's caught. Keenan Allen. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call <laughs> it, right? He's trying to work his way through. All that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on it. Really well done. They will run straight ahead with Swift. He's able to force his way through one man, but he can muster only about a yard on the play. Second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. 
They work now on second and nine. Operating from the gun, Williams. And he will find the open man. It's D.J. Moore. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 36. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. Got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Swift going to try up the middle. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It was Dante Fowler who got in there to bring him down. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And he's going to be brought down at about the 33-yard line. The keeper gets him seven that time, but it'll lead to a third down. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. Williams now from the gun on third down. And that's out to the flat for Swift. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 23. Give them 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn them a fresh set of downs. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. Back to throw now on first down. That pass complete to Moore. So five yards here, five on the play, and it'll be second down. And I think he just wanted to get the ball to one of his playmakers to see if they can make something happen, but he ends up throwing into a crowded area, and after the catch, he isn't able to do much with it. Now second and five. And he'll go right back to Moore, complete again. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14, before he's out of bounds. Short completion, just four yards. And they'll be faced with a third and inches. On the handoff, this is Swift. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. It's a seven-yard gain and good enough to move the chains. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Here's Swift. He gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. If you're going to keep these guys out of the end zone, you've got to be able to commit to stopping the run, and that's a nice job there getting the safeties involved in run support. Second and goal from inside the five. Back to throw. Williams toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. They'll look to throw for it with Williams. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Caleb Williams on his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns. And the Bears are able to add on to that lead. But defensively, it didn't seem like anybody had eyes on the quarterback, and he took advantage. So you think that maybe you were seeing some pretty good instincts for a young guy? Because that's the thing you worry about. Coming out of college, you're used to getting away with just about anything you want to do. You're just superior. Here, he has to read it, figure it out, and know when it's time to go. Santos now to add the PAT. It's good, and it's 21-10. 
And what a drive that was. 16 plays all told. And it results in a four-yard touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. The commander's offense and Terry McLaurin headed back onto the field. And it may be time for this defense to start throwing a second defender his way because whatever they've done, it has not worked in this first half. Out there, set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. From the shotgun, it's Daniels. Completes to Zacchaeus. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. That connection seemed to work out okay on the first play of the drive. Why not go right back to it? And once again, this defense is left without an answer as they surrender back-to-back -back first downs. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. To throw is Daniels. This is Ertz on the pitch and catch. So the completion good for six yards. And that will bring up second down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. This second and four. A give left side to Robinson. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Here's the first carry for Austin Eckler. And they move this all the way down to the nine. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. Well, as a lineman, they are trained. You've got to stay close to home. If you're more than a yard downfield, they're going to toss that flag, and they did there. Off the play fake, Daniels. That to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late, they're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. So they've been in the red zone three times, and it's yielded just three points. Can they find the end zone here on second and goal? Now Daniels. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. A 
A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Daniels looking to throw. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. Austin Seibert sets up for the field goal try. From the right hash, this from 33. Seibert able to knock this one through, and that'll make this an eight-point game. So the margin shrinks a bit as back-to-back -back drives here for him in with field goals. Yeah, we know no one's turning down three, especially in the first half, but you've got to finish these drives in the end zone. That's got to be a priority. Nice to have a reliable kicker, but outside of his agent, you know you'd rather him kick one-pointers instead of three-pointers. After the main field goal, Seibert back out there to kick it away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Bears offense and Caleb Williams set to go to work once more. Now this defense has got to be searching for answers right now. It's been his ability to make plays on the ground here in this first half that's really giving him fits. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. Right now, everything they touch turns to gold. This is their fourth possession. Touchdowns on their first three possessions. I mean, this defense, they can't seem to stop them. It's like they're on skates. Great analogy, Brandon, because they are pushing them back and winning everything at the line of scrimmage. They've just been laying down tracks towards the opposite end zone. So to themselves, all they're saying is, if we don't make a mistake, there's no way they can stop us. And this is a quarterback who's already had success on the ground in this first half, but this time they're able to hem him in. And it's always different when you rush a mobile quarterback as opposed to a guy you know will be right back in the pocket. In this case, you got to make sure the inside pressure and the outside pressure match, and maybe even a second wave to make sure if he squirts free, you've got someone to tackle him. The offense on third down, they haven't been stopped yet. A perfect seven for seven. This is going to be third and 13. To throw, it's Williams. And this is going to be incomplete. So after three drives, it ended touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. They get bogged down on drive number four. Yeah, I don't know how excited you would be on the other side of the ball that they finally didn't score. You know, you're happy, of course, but at the same time, did you have that much to do with it, or did they just get tired? Maybe it's just a sense of relief at this point. <laughs> on fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. Now we get another look at Washington on offense. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that. That weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive down with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Here's a second and five. Working out of the gun, Daniels. And that is incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was gonna get it. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. To the air goes Daniels. A quick throw there is incomplete. 
How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Tress Way on fourth down is sent out to punt. DeAndre Carter back deep. Taking it about the 16. A 40-yard punt, five yards on the return. And the Bears take over. Well, let's shine the spotlight on the former Georgia Bulldog, DeAndre Swift, who's set to begin this next drive. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, You've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. To throw, Williams. And there's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. And a good stiff arm there before he's brought down on a nice little game. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. From the gun, here's Williams. Wide open, it's Allen complete. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 28 yards the gain there on the catch and run. Another nice play there. They've gotten down into the red zone in no time at all. That's what this offense can do when they get on a roll. And now they're set up with a first and 10. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Again, he'll drop the throw. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. To the air once more, Williams. And it's caught. And the Bears are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. It's been all passing all the time on this drive. Five for five, and now first and goal. Feels like a case of until they stop us, we might as well keep running the offense that we like to run. Don't change up and do something different just because you think you need to. Working out of the gun, Williams. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. To the air, Williams. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. And they'll burn the timeout with five seconds left. A chance to try to add three points before heading to the locker room. Now with five seconds left, not really enough time to run another play and then stop it. So on comes the field goal unit. This is less than an extra point, just a 19-yard attempt. Santos' kick is up and through, and the lead now 11, 24 to 13. So three points on the board, as easy a field goal as you're going to get, but I can see you shaking your head. I love that peripheral vision of yours, partner, because to me, if it's the fourth quarter and you're up six, I get it. But now, even if you run and don't get in, you're still setting them up to go a long field, 98, 99-yard drive. How do you look at your defense and not give them that opportunity? So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. 
And they'll let that one go as it skips through the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Washington offense at the line and ready to roll. And they'll have time for one play. There's two seconds on the clock. The final shot before break. Daniels, he's going to loft this one deep left sideline. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. In the first half, it was the rookie from USC, Caleb Williams, who was looking the part. And he did it with his legs, accounting for three first half touchdowns on the ground. Sensational. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Washington down on the scoreboard, but they are getting the football first here, and we are back underway on EA Sports. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. First chance for the Commander's offense now as they head out for their opening series of the second half. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. On first and ten, it's Robinson. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You can go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. From the 44-yard line, here's second and six. Again, it's Robinson. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Throwing now is Daniels. This is Ertz on the pitch and catch. Just a gain of a couple there. And it'll be second down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Second down and eight. Robinson up the middle, and he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. 
So they'll wind up losing five yards on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. I don't know how well our microphones are picking it up for those of you at home, but uh, Charles, you and I can hear it. A lot of groans right now coming from this crowd. I don't know if we're picking up what's happening in the stadium or from the people who are supporting this team at home because it's coming through loud and clear to you and me. This offense, they've been stuck in neutral much of the game, and on that last play, they actually went in reverse. I think this crowd would have liked neutral, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> neutral would have strongly been preferred. They'll take anything positive at this point. The Bears offense and their quarterback ready to go once more. And he had it going in the first half, that's for sure. He's really had his way with his secondary. They've been powerless to stop him. And he'll look to keep it rolling right here. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. Here's Williams. And there's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. From the 21, here's second down and eight. They'll fake the give. Now Williams. That's complete to Swift out of the backfield. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Williams from the gun on third down. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That third down conversion, good for 23. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode Really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Here's a handoff to Swift. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. From just shy of midfield, here's second and nine. From the shotgun, a throw for Williams. Caught by Allen. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. The Bears on the move. They've got another first down. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys... I think have running back in their background. Here's Swift. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. From the 31, here comes second and a yard. Once again, it's Swift. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. 63 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. They go quickly here out to Moore. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it's second down. Looking to throw is Williams. Able to get away. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Caleb Williams 
a 13-yard touchdown run. And the Bears are able to extend their lead. They've already been on record as saying, hey, if our rookie quarterback's going to tuck it and run on a scramble, we kind of hold our breath. Well, that was a maybe no, 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 yes, as he's <laughs> able to get into the end zone. Are you saying he's got to learn where the line is about whether you keep your eyes downfield and try and find a receiver or you tuck it and go? And I think he's there's going to be some growing pains with that. I think in this case, he made the right decision. And we know he's got the speed. He showed it there. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and the lead is up to 18 now. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Washington ready to try again on offense. I kind of feel like they've reached a do or die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Now a handoff to start it out. Robinson. And he'll get this to the 32. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. And give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. And they run the option on second down. They'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Daniels. Work in the middle of the field and he's got a man complete. And he's gonna have a commander's first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Looking to throw, Daniels. This will be caught by Brown. On the move past the 40, still going inside the 20. Touchdown, Washington. Noah Brown. 61 yards and the commanders get a bit closer as a former db you might not like to see that but from a wide receiver's perspective those are the plays they dream of correct on both counts <laughs> all right because once he took off i mean let's face it that should have been done in big sky country there aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there and off he went glad i wasn't the one trying to chase him cybered on for the pat And that one makes this an 11-point deficit now. Just a four-play drive that time. And it was polished off by a Washington touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, still a good return. They'll start the drive right around the 37. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and 10.
On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. 38-yard line, second and nine. They'll run the draw here with Swift. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. 72 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Well, you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are out in the field and they're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass them with a running play. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to move the sticks with a gain of four on third and inches. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now, three plays, all three short runs, but together a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And down to the 44, five yards that time. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and be frank about it. Most offenses don't expect to have five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Throwing is Williams. Looks for the out route, and it's complete to Komet. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Seven catches for him now in this last one, the first down. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. They'll go play action here with Williams. And that's out to the flat for Swift. Two yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. This is second and eight. Play action. Now Williams. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Commander's Field. It's Bears football here. They also have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. Another drive coming up for this Washington offense. Well, still a long way to go, but trending upward. They scored the last time out, you remember. Then their defense forced the punt. Now they try to inch closer, but still ultimately down two scores in the final quarter. Daniels looking to throw. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 and a first. As we both know, there was a lot that went into why they made him their first round pick this year. And part of it was what they saw in college, his playmaking ability when things break down. As soon as he saw he wasn't getting a lane to throw, he pivoted and found an alternate way to the marker.
One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. To throw is Daniels. It's complete to Brown, right side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Play action. Now it's Daniels. Middle of the field. He's got McLaurin. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. And he'll get this just inside the 30-yard line. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. From the 29, here's second down and seven. Out of the gun, they give to Robinson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 10 yards there, good for a Washington first down. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. So here's a first and 10 now, down inside the 20. Now Daniels. Over the middle, that's the tight end Senate. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Ball resting on the 10-yard line. It's second and one. Hand off to Robinson out of the shotgun. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Commanders. Brian Robinson, Jr. A 10-yard touchdown run. And the Commanders have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line, because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. But he will not get in here. He stopped up short of the goal line, and this will remain a five-point game. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. And bulldozing his way through. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The visitors' offense and running back DeAndre Swift headed back onto the field. And he has put in a full game's work and then some. Just an incredible performance on the ground to this point in the fourth quarter. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. 
And it's second down. The good signal calls would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. To throw, Williams. He's going to get that to Swift underneath. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. That's caught. It's DeAndre Carter. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Well, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Well, there's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. It's a pickup of 10 and a Bears first down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. To throw, it's Williams. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. To the air once more, Williams. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Williams. All the commanders are going to get there as he's taken down. A loss of four that time on the sack, and it brings up second. And he won that play the way he usually does. Excellent torque, power, and finishes. Quick wins at the line of scrimmage, meaning he's right past the offensive player and puts the quarterback on the ground. Well, this has been a good march down the field, but now they're stuck looking at a second and 14. From the gun, here's Swift. And powering through at the 35. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. 94 yards rushing for him now to this point. This has been an up-and-down, back-and-forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive took a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. On play action, here's Williams. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 15-yard line. A little surprise pays off on third and one. Pass instead of run. Gets him 15 yards. Now that's a big pickup right there. And so often we focus on how the quarterback's faking on play action. How about everyone being in on the deal and picking it up? Second, third levels. You can see them trying to recover. They bit. Worked out offensively. To the air, Williams. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Dorrance Armstrong able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. A CD, a little bit of feast or famine for him. He's had some success throwing the football, but also now he's been sacked four times. Yeah, you just mentioned the four sacks, but you're right. He has managed to hang in there and make plays at times. His offensive line, they've got to figure it out and pick things up and give him more opportunities. And he has to help them by getting rid of the ball a little bit quicker as well. Off the play fake, it's Williams. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down. So let's sort this out.
So obviously they will decline the penalty there and the result is six points. Now the point after try for Santos. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the end result is a Bears touchdown. The Bears send the kicking team out there, and they will send this one away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The commander's offense and Jaden Daniels getting set for this next possession. And we'll take you through some of the highlights here. You'll notice he had a hand in a lot of them so far. He's got this offense rolling right now. Out there set and ready for this next drive the Washington offense well that last touchdown we just saw what an important one now it's back to a two score deficit for this crew as they take the field here and they are in desperate need of finding the end zone call it a gain of six on the play and that's going to bring up second down fourth quarter every drive so critical and you figure may only get one more shot after this so a touchdown's imperative on this drive it is but you also have to think to yourself in play calling don't hold anything back don't save it for the second touchdown you got the first one for the second one to even matter and that almost their first int of the ball game had his sights on it but he couldn't seal the deal Oh, this defense knows. Fourth quarter, they need to make a play. That one was ripe for the taking. Could have changed the complexion of the ball game, but it winds up incomplete. To the air goes Daniels. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. And I think we'll probably see him go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores. They have to try and make something good happen. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Daniel's going to throw for it. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The commanders went for it, but they cannot pick up the first. And the Bears are going to get the football back, and they're going to get it in great field position. So still over three minutes remaining in this game, but boy, not getting that when that hurt. That's a little bit demoralizing, so they have to be careful about that because still have an opportunity if they can get some things done on defense. But now, since they've taken over on downs, a team with the ball, guess what? Going to four-minute offense, maybe they can put this thing away. On first and 10, it's Swift. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. DeAndre Swift, 31 yards. And the Bears have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, this, of course, set up by the stop a moment ago on fourth down. And now that might be the score that puts this one officially out of reach. And it's a tough one because your hands are tied when you're losing in the fourth quarter because you know you've got to make something happen. They couldn't pick up the first down, and after that, the air just went right out of the balloon, and you knew you were looking at a defeated team. 
Santos with the extra point, and that will make this a 19-point game. It only took him two plays there to find the end zone. The last one, the long run, getting him in for six points. The Bears send the kicking team out there, and they will send this one away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. There's Terry McLaurin, such an exciting pass catcher as this offense comes out for their next drive. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Throwing now is Daniels. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. But at this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. On the screen, this is Eckler. Room past the 35 and all the way up to the 35-yard line. 10 yards there, good for a Washington first down. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide, and these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. Here's Daniels. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. So it's Commander's football as we get back to it. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Second and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Sets up the screen to Robinson. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. And that is incomplete. Shutting down that play, Kyler Gordon on the defensive side. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. On fourth down, here's Daniels. That is caught, and they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. And Washington now going to use the first of their three timeouts as it comes with a minute 25 left to go in the contest. So this offense able to convert on fourth and now a fresh set of downs here, first and 10. They'll look to throw again. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Maybe just a lack of concentration there as he couldn't haul it in. And when you're going across the middle like that, you know, he's running that drag route, you are conscious of all the bodies and the traffic in there. But let's face it, if you're going there, you might as well come down with the football and absorb whatever else happens after that. Pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? <laughs> no. No, not at all. 
A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. From the shotgun, it's Daniels. And this is going to be incomplete. I tell you what, that's a veteran play from a guy in his first season in the NFL. A lot of rookies are trying to force something there. He thought better of it, and that was the right decision. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. Well, let's shine the spotlight on the former Georgia Bulldog, DeAndre Swift, who's set to begin this next drive. And really, a lot of guys you could highlight on this offense with how well they've played, but he's one of them. He's been spectacular so far. I'd say he'd be the number one, wouldn't you? Yeah. Because it's not just the numbers. It's, as you said, I think he said focal point. Well, that's what he's been, and that means he's created other opportunities because they've had to bring the defense to him. He's running really well. He's caught it out of the backfield. They're trying to stop him. That means there are chances for the rest of the guys to do damage themselves. 142 yards rushing for him now on 25 carries. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. So no shortage of offense in this game, but a very clean game too, Charles. Each side got its points, but they did so without committing a single turnover. That's so true, and it certainly felt like NFL football at its finest, right? You talk about the highest level for both of these offenses. Neither one of them afraid of taking risks, and both of them aggressively pushing it downfield. I did like, Brandon, how smart they were about going about their business, though. They were high flying, but they took care of the ball. Yeah, they did. And just keeping it clean in a game like this with all these points, you don't see that very often, even at the highest level. Job well done by both sides. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gordon. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we sign off from Landover.